did you end up doing more than you anticipated and, and kind of what was the thought process on, on the kind of volume of changes? Uh, I mean, compared to the number of transactions we've made the last several years, I think this was a bit more modest. Uh, you know, the, the trade that we just made, talking about adding a 25-year-old position player talent up the middle talent that we're, we're really high on the St. Louis trade, you know, another almost 25-year-old position player talent we're really high on. So uh, there were there were a few changes. There were a few tweaks. Love the, the team we had last year. Love the guys uh, that we had last year, um, including the ones that, that we traded, uh, but felt that by and large, I mean, a lot of this team's still together. There were some tweaks uh, in just making sure that for depth purposes and um, you know, things like that that were a little bit better cover than maybe were even last year. Uh, but I think a lot of this group, it's by and large, it's pretty similar, uh, certainly by our standards. Josh Tolentino with the Athletic. Eric, uh, from an offensive standpoint, that the, you, at the end of last season, you said the, that was kind of a, a big focus point in, in runs and in production. Uh, do you think you were able to improve that uh, over the off season? I think. Um, it, Perhaps not in the exact ways that we, we thought we would in, in the early going, but uh, we started to adapt as the offseason wore on. Just the some of the opportunities, the, the priority guys that we, we focused on didn't materialize in the early going. Uh, but, you know, it's in, in taking Tommy away from the unit that's as established an offensive performer as we've had. Um, there's, no, there's no denying that. But uh, the addition of Yoshi, of Jose Martinez, Hunter Renfro, our assessment of him, uh, that's a lot of power. That's a lot of really good offense. And uh, we also took some steps. I think we, once we started to really exhaust things on the offensive side, we never want to force things. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up bringing in a few players that also could help us on the defensive side of the ball. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, our goal is just to, to win by one. I think we've done enough on the offensive side to, to have a different look um, for guys to chip in in different ways. And I think we've also strengthened our defensive, you know, the defensive side of things once uh, we've exhausted the offense. Juan Toribio with MLB.com. Kevin, where do you see kind of Manuel Margot fitting in in the outfield mix? Well, really talented player that we, we've got a number, uh, you know, some history with just from what he's done in the past. Uh, we just got done talking about him in early May. Very raised player. Plays great defense, does some special things on the bases, and offensively looks like, you know, he certainly has held his own and might have uh, room to, to continue. Uh, but – you don't get premium. We're spoiled here with KK and his what he does defensively. To be able to add another defensive center fielder that now will probably look to see how he um, can handle right and left field at times just makes us special in the outfield. I thought last year on you know given nights we had as good as outfield as anybody in baseball, and and we prioritize working behind our pitchers, and he's gonna he's gonna be a, a big add to that. Steve Carney, 95.3 WDAE. Uh, for both of you, um, what do you uh, – I guess I guess the question is, how does the corner infield look for, for both at third base and first base? How do you see that working out? I, I think uh, we're going to learn a lot. We, we've got players that we know enough about that can certainly do it. Um, Yoshi is going to be a guy that we're going to get in. He's going to get reps in left field. He's also going to get reps at third base. Uh, and you guys have seen over the last couple of seasons what, what we would think makes us good and uh, on the field is being versatile. So we'll get everybody action at different spots. Uh, you know, Yandi, in fairness to Yandi, I, I don't know if he ever had – uh, time to really get his defense underway consistently because of the injuries that crept up. But he did show us enough, and he, he's got good hands. He'll continue to work at third base. We know how special, uh, whether it's Joey Wendell, uh, Daniel Robertson, uh, a lot of those guys and the improvements G-Man made over at first, we, we feel like we've got some really good options. Justin Grant at CBS Tampa. Talking to Tyler Glasnow this morning, I asked him, who's the ace? And he said, well, all of us. With that being said, we've never seen a long stretch of those three together healthy. So is there going to be a concentrated effort to maybe minimize their innings compared to maybe other aces in the league to, to stretch them all out considering the two injuries plus Charlie's workload last year? Yeah, I, I think that, that we, we're going to take each of them individually. And Kyle uh, Snyder and, and Stan do such a good job of 
building those relationships at trust where those guys can be honest with how their body is feeling, how their arms are feeling. We do look, we're, we're fortunate. Uh, those three guys. And I think anytime you talk about our pitchers and starter bulk, you got, yeah, you have to add Yarbs and Torinos in there. Those guys have been really special for very young, uh, young in their career so but they're all individual and we're, we're going to get to know a lot of them uh and how they've responded from getting to play a little bit farther baseball we'll find out in spring training but trust that kyle will take the lead on that and 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 our pitchers we got to keep them healthy and perform well uh kevin you mentioned the yoshi and uh yandi and and some of the other pieces but do you Margot, Renfro fit in the outfield. It seems like you've got a lot of things to kind of sort out. Is, is there a kind of a sequence? I mean, how do you kind of know, okay, this will work, so this will work, so this will work? Like, do you have to decide where Yoshi plays first or – how the outfield rotation works, or how do, how do you do it? I, I haven't. I don't think we've put a ton of thought into that yet. We're gonna. We're, we'll we'll start thinking those things as we're leading up into games. Uh, we've got a pretty good enough sense of, you know, early on in spring training, you play a day, you sit a day, so it'll be pretty easy to get the guys in. And then once we find whether it's through infield drills, outfield drills, and games played consistently. Then we'll find out how, how it all lines up. But we're, we are as interested as anybody to see how it's all going to come together uh, because we know we've got a lot of talented options. As much talented options, depth as maybe uh, we had last year going into spring training. Are you done dealing, do you think, at this point? Uh, I, I thought we were probably done a week and a half ago, and, and, and we weren't. So, um, look, I, I – so I, I don't want to say anything with with much confidence. I think we're, we we feel good about where we're at. Uh, I can confidently say there's nothing active at at the moment. Um, but it is, you know, I think also our job at to to be in tune with what's going on out there. And if if there's activity, if there's trade conversations going, if there are opportunities, um, you know, through free agency, whatever it may be, uh, for some of the guys still looking for opportunities uh, in the camp here. Uh, we have to be prepared. We have to be on top of that. And uh, if there's something that can help us, uh, we'll, we'll be ready to go. But I, I would say that as, as we sit right now, um, we feel good about where we're at and nothing imminent by any means. Emilio kind of established himself as kind of like the unofficial closer. You're kind of heading into this year. Do you feel good about the options that you have? And, and would it be another kind of closer by committee type situation? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. We feel really good about our bullpen, our bullpen depth. Those guys were pretty special last year. They, they worked so well together as a unit. Uh, they were selfless. And that, that's, I think, as much as anything. Their stuff is their stuff, and they're talented. <coughs> Excuse me. But being selfless in those back-end bullpen roles allows us to be creative and maximize opportunities uh, for us to win games. And, yes, Emilio was a huge part of that. And maybe not a more selfless player on our team last year, um, but we, we like the guys that we have coming into camp. For either of you, this team's no longer under the radar. There are expectations externally about making the playoffs, contending for a World Series. I know those expectations have never changed for either of you, but is there a different sense of confidence with this team knowing that you will be competing for the AL East and for a World Series? Uh, I can take a crack at it from, from my perspective and, and, and Kevin his. Yeah, I, I think, you know, 2018 – validated some of the work that we've done and some of the talent we had on hand and the way that that year progressed last year took that a step further uh, and we were able to overcome a lot of adversity a lot of injuries but we still got to that point of reaching the postseason uh, and then once we got there being down 0-2 to come home and, and to play a couple of really good ball games the way we did take Houston to game five um, you know took it I think an additional step further and a lot of these guys are back and and a lot of the moves we made were to round out to strengthen this club to make sure we're as prepared as we can be for all that's going to be thrown at us this year and uh, the expectations are up but that's what you want um, from a clubhouse standpoint from you know the com our players you know just using Houston the series last year as a, as a preview of, of what I might expect this year and and how we'll go through it. The guys were loose. They still played hard. They still played fun. They played their game. And uh, there's a confidence with this group. And uh, I, I'd expect to see a lot of consistency with the way they approach things as they did late last season. For Kevin, uh, you know, Jose Alvarado has been back for a few days for, uh, you know, this upcoming spring. How important can these next five weeks be for a player like him? It feels like, he, you know, he might have something to prove. Well, uh, he's, he's going to be a big part of our spring. He's going to be a big part of our season. we got to get him going on the right foot. I know he had a, somewhat of a broken year last year, but 
Uh, we also saw stretches that, that he could be as talented as anybody uh, throwing a baseball. So uh, put our arms around him, support him. Uh, he certainly seems like he's in a good headspace, good mind uh, with an off season, and, and get him get him going. Uh, I'm very anxious and excited to see him get on a mound uh, and see you know where we pick up. For both Kevin and Eric, which area of the ball club do you feel best about at this point in terms of the combination of talent combined with depth? Do you have an answer ready to go? I, yeah. Depth. I mean, I think Eric and the staff do such a good job. Uh, we've got very talented players. That goes without saying. You don't do that and have the success that they, these guys did as a group last year. But the depth that, that we had – coming into the off season, the depth that we've acquired. Uh, and I don't even know if depth is the right word. We, we just got a bunch of good players that are going to really lengthen us out throughout the course of the season. We saw firsthand last year, I, mean, I think after game three or four, we never once saw the roster that we anticipated uh, being whole with again, maybe till the end of September. So uh, it, it, you got to have depth and, and, and we've got that coverage with special players. Yeah, I uh, echo that the the depth and the quality of it uh, there's I, I think on the the conference call the other night regarding the trade talked about how um, at least I think I did uh, if not then I am here uh, I talked about how we have you know 12 13 players that I think if pressed into regular duty uh, we'd, we'd feel really good about it and that they they do a really nice job with it and this is this is a group of people um that are that are competitive but they a lot of them have that that selfless attribute that team first attribute that i think we're going to need to to maximize what's going on here and last year the depth uh it, it proved vital uh to overcome a lot of the injuries and and the health issues that we had uh the depth is also important for unexpected performances both both good and bad and and to have 12 13 guys that we think right now are positioned if if an everyday role comes their way they'll be ready to go that's that's a great place to be and it also gives you that many more guys that can pop that can that can take that step forward and establish themselves at a higher level and uh you, you need to be in a position to to have some unexpected surprises in both directions and you need to be in position to protect yourself from those that aren't as positive how will you kind of determine you know if you're going to use the opener on a regular basis if you're not going to use it at all if it's going to be more of an occasional spot duty thing and you know, what factors are going to go into that decision i'm shocked that that was about the 12th question of this i, I would have bet one or two right out of the gate um we're going to do a lot of a lot of talking, a lot of listening. Uh, I think Yanni, we all recognize Yanni and Yarbs have put themselves in a really good spot, and we're not as successful as we were the last two seasons without their contributions. And you know, with Yarbs, when the injuries came out and he's out there for seven straight weeks dominating, you know, you, you got to consider it. And we're going to do everything uh, getting in front of it with the players. I personally don't think we'll have anything to announce until a lot of stuff unfolds towards the end of March. Uh, but everything's on the table that we're going to discuss over the next couple weeks. Kevin, I know in years past, you've had some of the guys in the back end of the bullpen hold off, uh, you know, a week or so before getting into games or even getting on the mound here in Port Charlotte. Is there any expectation that some of the guys like Alvarado Castillo could uh, end up being pushed back a couple of days or even as much as a week uh, to get them ready and make sure they save their bullets for the regular season? Yeah, I, I think that's fair to assume. Uh, Kyle, he's probably been mapping stuff out since the first of the year and you know they'll they'll have their bullpens they'll have their live bps and then we'll wait to hear and see how the body and the arm is responding uh you can do a lot of things from in the off season but as soon as you get here in port charlotte and that workload ramps up there's an adjustment and and that's where our, our players our training staff strength strength and conditioning they do such a good job of getting to know the guys and we'll coordinate each plan individually to to all of them but i, I think that's fair there, there could be a couple guys that are slowed down a little bit with, with no reason other than just uh keep them as healthy as possible it's gonna be impossible to quantify how much the sign stealing helped with the Astros. But what we do know is you lost a piece of your front office because of it. Just want to get your thoughts uh, about it, how all that all played out. Yeah, I, look, it's uh, when when Haim received the opportunity he did in Boston, uh, 
you know, stress that the overwhelming, uh, the overwhelming emotion to that and feeling is just is happiness for him to, to have that opportunity. And this is this is no different. The, the, the circumstances and what might have led to uh, the opportunity arising and, and when it arises that, you know, that's uh, I'm happy for him. And, and, and that's where the focus is and for him to, to receive that opportunity. And then it, it, it shifts back to just our business here and, and making sure that we have people in position to step up to fill those shoes and. Uh, we got to take care of our own business, so don't don't stray too far from that. And we're in camp here, and uh, entirely focused on on the business at hand here. And then uh, maybe for both of you, uh, as far as just how you're set up, not just now, but with the farm system and going forward, what what are the plans? First of all, for Wander, and then second of all, for maybe both of you, is what do you think when you see some of these names of the guys that are coming or, or are young to camp this year, and how this bodes well for the few future seasons? Yeah. Um, regarding Wander, it's to continue to um, to progress uh, in in all aspects of, of you know the things you need to do to develop to be a major league player and a and a long standing major league player and uh, you know the talent is visible and and you don't have many guys there are many guys across baseball that, that possess the talent that he has and it's it's on us to make sure that. Uh, as he continues to develop and mature, that that he's fully ready to go when when he hits the big stage and he and he hits our major league club. Um, but he's he's done a wonderful job so far of, of progressing at a really quick rate and a rate that we haven't seen uh, all too often. And uh, we're not we're not going to force anything. We're not going to throw any additional expectations on him. We just want to make sure that that we do right 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 by him, uh, progress him uh, in all aspects of of his development as best as we can, and prepare him for one day being a major league player and. Um, if he picks up where he left off last year, you know, I, I don't know where that'll lead, but um, you know, it's conceivable to to think that there's conversations to be had there, you know, deep into this season.